Stream announcements, stream announcements. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Full Circle. I am your host, Kay, and I'm joined once again by Dio and iFlame. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, I'm Dio. I'm a World Cup caster and a GMT and a member of Tournament Committee, uh, and I do stuff here for Corsace, uh, and I also host uh, the other Tri-Badge Tournament in Standard, the Perennial. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Hi, I do casting. Yeah, I'm I playing. Mostly do casting as well, including for the World Cup and, of course, Corsace. Uh, I have been dragged into casting for the Perennials, so come check out that tournament. It's going to be a banger. All right. So let's move on here to the quarterfinals recap, and we have a lot to cover this this week and yeah so first match should be south korea versus ukraine now we did predict that uh ukraine would get a good get a point i believe I, I believe that was our consensus last week yep, like we, one we just point predict... <laughs> i think the the map to which we argued on was a bit different if you two want to talk about that yeah, yeah i think uh... it was Oh, Vordy, go ahead, go ahead. who uh, who had the right call on on yep. which map Ukraine would get their point on, so well done to Vordy. You know, regardless, one point for Ukraine I think is considered a success. Uh, but otherwise, the match went exactly as expected. They were, I think, Dio. The map you predicted them to get a point on was actually the one other incredibly close map. So they nearly had two, uh, but Almost. I think it's fair to say we some of us know what we're talking about on occasion. On occasion, yeah. They on got occasion. one point on Nomad Speed, um, and they were 80k points off uh, from winning another map on Night Fog, and that was the match. It was 6-1. Uh, never really yeah. any doubt that you would see South Korea move on to the semifinals and winner's bracket. Yeah, I think South Korea has really proven just how strong of a team they are. We saw it in OWC, as you know, we love to bring up as always. And they're clearly showing that even, you know, despite having six members, which is two less than OWC, they are still a force to be reckoned with. But yeah, I think that was a really, really quick recap. We're going to be moving on to our next match from that weekend, which is Brazil versus Germany. Now, this match in particular was pretty... Uh, it was pretty, you know, split between us. I think a lot of us voted either way, and we kind of knew that it was going to be close. Yeah, I ended up casting this match, so I'll talk about this to start. This was a really good match and a very close match. Um, the match started off with Nissan just absolutely popping off for Brazil, full comboing a map where the next best score in the lobby was 440k. Um, and then... We saw Brazil trade back on a free mod pick. We saw Nissan again, full combo, another speed map. This time a little bit less of a lobby gap, and there was still uh, good support from the rest of Brazil. Uh, and then we saw Brazil take a first break point. It was on free mod mechanics, a third full combo for Nissan out of four maps so far uh, on that map. Um, and then Germany started to pull ahead and get some break points in this match, and it looked like it was going to be tough for Brazil to win. They were down... Uh, I think it was four to, yeah, four to three at that point. And they just ended up winning three in a row. There was a hard rock two pick from Germany that seemed very out of place, uh, given the state of the pool. Um, Brazil had picked two low approach rate maps and lost both of them. And there was a low approach rate hidden still up that went unpicked. Uh, Germany opting for the hard rock two pick instead. Uh, Brazil wins that. They pick their next map of the Hard Rock, and then uh, Germany last picks a DT1, which Brazil has had the advantage on DT maps all match long, and Brazil wins this one as well, this time with a full combo from Defons. Defons and Zubs and Korea Maluko uh, really bringing up the back half of the match for Brazil, all three of them in for all three of those maps and putting up really good scores. Yeah, I think kind of as we expected, it was Kriller against the core of Brazil for the most part. Obviously, um, Germany does have solid supporting players, but uh, Germ Brazil just had a really impressive 
team performance as a whole. They had four players in the uh, top 20 individual performances, which is the first time we've seen that from any team this tournament. Yep. Uh, Germany had Kriller at number two, but uh, outside of that, there wasn't a ton of uh, support outside of uh, Scherger at, no at number 21. Um, Brazil even just had really solid team scores. I know they were uh, second best team score on quite a number of maps. They were first on, uh, I think it might have been the uh, the Hard Rock, uh, which is really good to see. So uh, both these teams are looking pretty strong going into the rest of the tournament. Definitely one that could have gone uh, either way. Uh, and I do think Kriller, it was just a little bit too early for Kriller to really run away with it. Um, and Brazil had no problem on these maps whatsoever. Yeah, and I think as well, a last thing for Germany, because I, I think they could have pretty easily won this match if they had uh, been able to pick into the low AR hidden in uh, this match. And I feel like if they can force the tiebreaker, maybe they have a better chance on that uh, as opposed to Brazil in that match. It was angry for um, so a straight up mechanics map. Brazil was pretty solid on mechanics, but Germany as well, you know, has very, very good players. And especially on tiebreaker, that solo carry performance from Kriller can end up mattering more. Um, so I think if they had picked into that hidden two, this match could have gone a completely different way. Uh, but you just never know, especially with their uh, reluctance to pick it, whether they even had good team scores on it. Um, so it might have just been a team score gap and Brazil was just that much better. Or maybe uh, Germany is actually better than the result that they were able to get in this matchup. And uh, I hope to see some of that in the losers bracket this week. They have a pretty tough match in losers this week as well. Yeah, I think that overall the match did go, you know, you know, we talked about it went over to Brazil and we talked about how close it was. But I mean, we did believe in the power of numbers in that case, you know, Kriller only had so much carry potential, especially that early, like we said last week. And then um, Dio and I had, you know, favored the power in numbers over, you know, your hardcore carry, especially this early into the match. And I think that it could have gone either way, maybe. Maybe Germany just had a couple of, you know, third player syndrome, perhaps, or, you know, maybe Brazil just had an extremely good day. I think either way, um, both teams played their heart out. And I, you know, that loser's bracket is not easy, as is the case in most round of 16 uh, matches. But I still think that Germany is still in this. And it's, you know, it can, you know, it's not the end of the world for Germany. I, But we will, go, of course, go over their semifinals matches later. We are going to be moving on from Brazil versus Germany into the next loser's bracket match, which will be the United States versus Sweden. Um, like, we, okay, I had talked about last week how, you know, in round of 16, the United States didn't have all six members. That was a concern. And I will admit for the first, I, I had been roughing that match, and I will admit for the first, I would say two to three maps, I was a bit concerned that maybe I would see a repeat of round of 16. And the United States, I don't know. I've, I've definitely seen them be more organized. Yes, they did win the match 6-2. Yes, they did, you know, they did, you know, spectacularly. They said great scores. But organizationally, um, I think that they were all over the place. I feel like, I feel like this match went pretty well for the U.S., all things considered. They had... Some scores that leave some things to be desired on the speed maps in particular, but they were still able to win those picks um, without much trouble in this match. And the only two maps that they lost were, you know, those sort of consistency maps that are relatively easy for the pool and things that Sweden had uh, a really good time on, like Night Fog and Vortex. Those are, I think, without a doubt, the two easiest maps in the pool. And aside from that, whenever it was the skill cap maps, it was the USA pretty dominant. Uh, 600k on the Hard Rock 2, one of the harder maps in the pool. Um, even on Sweden's pick in the free mod 1, they still managed to win by almost 300k. 900k score difference on the Nomad 1 low pro trait map. Uh, 500k score difference on the DT3 with a full combo from Takedo with 98 ACK, which is crazy. The next best ACK in the lobby was 96. Um, and then a Almost a double score, 1.2 million team score gap on the DT3 or DT2 in this pool. I, I feel like 
maybe some of the rosters you could argue for swaps out on certain players for the United States. But, you know, even on stuff like uh, Dance of Many, Amata no Mai, uh, they had Razor Fruit in for that map. I think most people would look to Takedo and Bashi Man to be better performers on a map like that on the low AR Nomad. Razor Fruit top scored with 50k. Like, I think the, I think, you know, maybe you can talk about like, certain rosters could maybe be better for the United States on certain maps or certain players uh, weren't playing up to their usual standard at the start of the match, right? With uh, Kama Takedo dropping 400k-ish on the Nomad 2 last week. Um, but one thing I was talking with Fire Rage about before this match happened, we were in VC in the 3WC server. Um, a lot of these players are really young or have limited experience on OWC, you know, you're going to look to players like Takedo as some of the longest standing OWC players on the roster. It's not a very big OWC history compared to a lot of past United States rosters in the World Cup or in 3WC. Um, so I think this team is one that is going to have some of those organization issues, whether it's picking the right roster, whether it's uh, knowing how much prep they need to do for certain maps, whatever. But um, I think they'll. This match this week clearly looked way better for them than the match versus Chile. And in the context of Chile winning their match uh, this week in quarterfinals and making it to the semis, I think uh, looks still better for the US. Yeah, I mean, I do want to shout out uh, Spinx specifically, who looked really good. We didn't quite see that same dominant performance we've seen in past weeks uh, from the Skilla. But even without Takedo, I feel like the U.S. probably still would have been fine, right? They were pretty far ahead on the maps they won. They had uh, six number one team scores. And they did have a couple rough scores, like you mentioned, Dio, that maybe are a bit concerning for the later stages of the tournament. But they still look like one of the best teams, as we'd have expected. They have their full roster back. And uh, I do think Sweden should be happy that they were all able to take a couple points off of this roster. Yeah, and Sweden looked good on those maps, right? The consistency yeah. maps that were a little lower star rating, they were able to put up really good scores. Um, and I think it was just a skill cap difference on the rest of the pool. Yeah, I think that overall the United States uh, you know, did have a lot of the shining moments. Not to say that Sweden didn't do well. Um, it is unfortunate that we kind of all saw this coming. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it's a very, like, it is what it is thing with this kind of thing. Like, you know, you go up against a powerhouse country like the United States. And unfortunately, I don't think Sweden has a large enough three-digit uh, player base to, you know, oh, yeah. And, you know, it, it is a bit unfortunate. But we are going to be moving on to the next Weather Vacuum match, which, which, you know, was predicted last week as another close match, which was Hong Kong versus the Philippines. And this was basically the Suwagi show versus, you know, Nathan Ramhyuk uh, 20, 2044. And, um, you know, the end result of that was, of course, that Hong Kong had, like, um, like Brazil versus Germany had gone 6-4 to the Philippines. Yeah, this was such a fun one to watch. Philippines, of course, did end up winning it 6-4, to four, but... You know, there are quite a few maps that were very close, very impressive team scores on both sides. You look at the Nomad 3, for example, Philippines, uh, Hong, sorry, Hong Kong had the number two team score, only second to the Philippines. Um, they had quite a few uh, number four scores where they were, again, behind the Philippines by one placement and uh, maybe one other team. Uh, there are just so many maps where these teams were so close in team score. Um, maps that were 200,000 points apart. And at the end of the day, Hyok absolutely popped off this week. I, I mean, I think it's well established at this point that Hyok is one of the best players at this tournament. Um, but I think a lot of people were still expecting um, a player like Suwagi to be able to match Hyok, especially this early on. It just wasn't the case. Uh, Hyok was the number one individual performer. Nathan Ram played fantastic as expected. Um, and on certain maps, Shwagi was able to match those performances. But across the entirety of that match, Swaggy just unfortunately wasn't able to keep up and didn't really have that second player um, to match Nathan Ram, right? Habiki played well. 
but that top two on Philippines is just so incredibly strong. Yeah, I think in this match, once you started, once you got one break point, that was basically the match. There was one break point in favor of Philippines, and then they just started trading back and forth again. Um, so Hong Kong was never really able to bite back and take a return break point against this team. And as you said, the top two consistency is what allows for that, right? When you have uh, two of the top 10 players uh, throughout the weekend on your team, it's very hard for any other team to put up really solid scores against you, especially when they're in on 10 out of 10 and 8 out of 10 maps, respectively, for Hyok and Nathan Ram. You know, in a case like Brazil, where you have Nissan and Defons in the top 10, they're in for 7 and 5 maps, respectively, out of 10. Um, so the kind of dynamic duo powerhouse effect that Hyok and Nathan Ram doesn't really that Hyok and Nathan Ram have doesn't really come out for Brazil but it does for the Philippines because those two are in for almost every single map for the team um so it really really creates uh, a very <laughs> difficult task for any team going up against them to try to get uh to try to get ahead or try to win a pick back and uh, as you see for Hong Kong with Amata no Mai, that was kind of the turning point in the match because after that, there were no other break points traded. It was just traded picks back and forth between both of the teams and uh, that ended up being at the end of the match for Hong Kong. And that is actually the only upset in winner's bracket last week, by the way. Uh, Hong Kong versus Philippines was the only match that was an upset last week. Um, I believe we predicted... Hong, I believe we predicted Philippines majority. Yeah, we predicted Philippines majority yeah. last week as well. Um, so we did, as a panel, manage to call the upset just barely. It was split three to two, um, which is pretty good considering that was a six four match. It was close. Yeah, and we don't need to talk about who was in the two, right, guys? That's of course uh, not. that's not important. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I think you know overall, like uh, Suwagi did do really well, but you know Nathan Ram and Hyuk. Um, was just too powerful and uh, you know of course that ended up going six to four to the philippines as i said and we are going to be moving on to the next losers bracket match and to wrap up this recap chile versus the russian federation that now this match was a heart stopper let me tell you because this is the second time that russia had been taken to a tiebreaker the second time an fc was you know given or an FC was performed on the tiebreaker by a member of the opposing team because against Sweden it was Skilla and against Chile it was Nikore. I think overall Russia just I I just think that Russia just had might have had a really really bad two weeks. I don't know. They just got unlucky two weeks in a row. But also I think their inconsistency on plenty of maps really showed and I believe they were missing players during this match. I think both sides were missing players. I believe for Chile their captain, Unha, was gone. And for the Russian Federation, I believe Desk was also gone. Yeah. And had Desk been there, I think it would have made the world of a difference. Yeah, I think so. I think ultimately, Desk is the kind of player for Russia that you want to have in on almost every map. So that was a big loss. Whereas Unha, while a very strong player, uh, is kind of does have more of a, a niche skill set on this Chile roster. Uh, whereas we saw consistently Gonza and Santan between the two of them, they were absolutely popping off in this match. Um, it, there were a lot of, uh, a few maps at least, that were incredibly close, could have gone either way. Uh, but ultimately, the, the, the duo of Santan and Gonza were just too much for the Russians to overcome. Um, they were able to kind of rotate between their third players very effectively uh, on Chile between uh, Nikore um and um Yukari. Yeah. Yeah, as well as Yukari. Those were the two that were in for the the most part. And then of course on the tiebreaker, it was neither Santan or Gonza, but Nikore who popped off with an FC, uh, which is very impressive to watch. Russia did have some pretty rough scores, honestly. I, it's not quite what you'd expect from the seventh seeded team. Um a lot of their scores were kind of in the bottom half, I think. Both teams looked really good on DT for the most part, as you'd expect. But uh, outside of that, Russia had some pretty rough scores. Both of them were obviously incredible on Hiddens as well. 
Um, but uh, Russia just didn't have the consistency, you know? It's the same as last week, where they looked really good on the maps they're good on, and they looked really bad on the maps they're left, less comfortable on. And you can't afford to do that against a team more consistent like uh, Chile. Yeah, I think this is an issue with a lot of Russian teams. This is a country that in World Cup tournaments has historically struggled to find that consistency uh, throughout multiple weekends of a tournament and seems to always have a little bit of trouble uh, making it beyond certain stages of a tournament in OWC. It's usually uh, kind of a top 12 exit for Russia. This time it's a top 16 exit in the quarterfinals weekend for Russia in 3WC, which is uh, sad to see. This is a country that looked really good this year on paper. They had a pretty solid roster, uh, especially with the addition of Sigi, who has been a really good tournament player for years and years, um, but just not able to convert on what looked to be on paper a really solid roster. Um, and as for Chile, able to convert on a roster that placed 15th in qualifiers despite two runs um, and is able to win out against Russia um, partially due to some rougher scores from Russia and partially due to some pop-offs from the side of Chile, right? Um, getting 600k, 700k on multiple members on low AR maps, uh, getting multiple full combos on, out of uh, members who you don't expect it to be, um, and getting still really solid scores outside of that FC on the tiebreaker, right? Even if Nikori doesn't FC and just drops 400k, they still win because Suntan had 675k himself, and the best score from Russia was Scroll with 460k on that tiebreaker. So um, the ability to pop off when it matters for Chile meant, went, where, went very well. Um, and then despite losing, I think it was Chile's first pick was the uh, DT3 in this match. They had Gonza and Suntan with 750k, 650k respectively. They lost that pick, lost Vortex yeah. right afterwards. Uh, they still pick into Nomad right after and end up winning it because Yukari Smug is able to get a more respectable score around 500k. Uh, you see the double FC from Gonza and Suntan come through. Uh, and then they're able to start winning breakpoints and other maps against Russia as well. So... I think a really interesting match. There's lots of breakpoints traded back and forth by both countries. Um, some consistency on skill sets from the different countries. Eventually, you see Chile picking into uh, some of the other skills that they might be a little better at, like the DT and the low AR. Um, but it's, it's an interesting match. Um, sad to see Russia go out so early. I think a lot of people would have expected Russia to be able to make it through the panel overall predicted Russia last week. Um, and we were, we were split on that decision. I think let's go Dio. So. Let's, let's right, go Dio. Rightly so. Cause it went to tiebreaker. Like that was a very close match. Um, it was. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I particularly say... Oh, oh go yeah, ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, I will say, I do think the match looks quite a bit different if they had uh, to see, okay. And Russia probably does. Uh, does take that so uh, i don't think they're necessarily uh, you know on paper their roster should not have gone out this early but uh, sometimes oh, that's how it goes i i think it was just a series of, of unfortunate events for russia that they yeah. had missed uh, a key player in my opinion like that's was so important especially on hard rock maps to support uh, a player like scroll but it is an unfortunate end for Russia, and um, we are going to be moving on to predictions now for semifinals. Before and... we do that, real quick, uh, oh, I just want to yeah, shout go. out because we did have teams eliminated last week. Besides, oh yes, 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 uh, yes of Russia. Of uh, shout out to France and Italy, who were the lower seeded teams in their matchup and did get eliminated. Uh, congrats to Finland and Canada for winning those matchups. Six uh, three for Finland, six zero for Canada, uh, and then there was one other upset in the loser's bracket last week. That was Indonesia beating Poland. Indonesia, a team with a four-player roster, uh, ended up beating Poland last week. Uh, and that was, I think, a split decision because yep. uh, literally only I voted for Indonesia. And understandably, because Poland had a full six-player roster and was higher seeded out of qualifiers. Um, so I think big props due to the players on Indonesia because they were able to make uh, what seemed like a really, really tough feat possible. Um, so good job to them. Uh, commiserations to Poland. And uh, good luck to Indonesia. You're going to need it because you have a uh, hard week ahead of you here. All right. 
now for real, we moved on to predictions. Thank you so much, Dio. And oh, we have two people that are dead. Oh, oh no. Anyways, um, <laughs> we're gonna. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. T one G Vordy, are you alive, sirs? Uh, yo, I think I, I think I set up the Vod Ninja. Should be working. Oh. Yeah, same. I am also. Oh, I, I can I can see T one G now. Oh, I can also oh, there, see there, there I am. There, I there am. we are. There we go. Oh, okay, Let's okay, go. okay. We have everyone here. We are going to be starting off with predictions, and we are going to be adding two people to the desk that we saw last week. We have uh, Vordy and T1G joining us to make us a complete set of five. And we're going to be starting off with our first match of semifinals, which will be Ukraine versus Canada, if we can get up on the screen. Um, so last week, we unfortunately saw Ukraine lose to South Korea 6-1, to one, and we saw Canada sweep 6-0 against France, and I will let, as always, the Canadians go first. If, Dio, if you could start us off, please. Oh, uh, sure. I was not ready. Um, just looking at the head-to-head -head for these teams, I think you're probably looking at a close match um even the maps where one team has an advantage looking at uh quarterfinals are pretty close they're like four versus five on multiple uh or you know nine versus ten on one um and then there's some maps where there's a clear advantage like reading maps and gimmick maps i think specifically are really good for canada um speed maps the speed nomad in particular is really good for ukraine they're a very very good mechanics roster um but canada also has a very good aim roster and i think a little bit of that diversity is going to be enough to put push canada over the edge against ukraine this weekend um ukraine is a team that has really really solid hard rock and really really solid speed mechanics um but i think the aim players on canada players like sorry uh and spicy picapone uh genderbender are all going to be good enough to help them win out in that matchup that said i don't think this is a one-sided match at all i think this is like very close um there are still good enough hard rock players and uh nomad players on the side of ukraine to win out on some of the maps that canada might have an on paper advantage on um, especially as the pool gets harder i think these players from ukraine who have experience in the ost world cup as compared to the players from canada where only sorry is a former world cup player um might have an advantage there so i will go canada like what is the tiebreaker this week also that matters tiebreaker is tech i will go if it makes it to tiebreaker canada can win that one uh let's call it six five canada i don't think this is a given match for either team i think this is a hard call yeah i'm gonna have to say the same i will probably take canada six to five on this one i do think it's going to be incredibly close what we've seen from these two teams so far has largely been uh, Dench popping off for Ukraine, but has had Roman and Raf GPO for the most part as well. Uh, slightly worse performances last week, whereas Canada have had uh, both Pigapon and Too Slow uh, outperforming most of the Ukrainian roster aside from uh, Dench. Uh, last week, they out both outperformed Dench as well. Uh, so to me, it's another week where it's going to come down to pool difficulty, right? If the uh, if we don't feel like the pool is too much harder for Canada, I think they should have a slight edge over Ukraine. Uh, but if we do have, you know, if they do feel the pool is much harder, uh, Canada starts to fall off because they don't think they scale super well. I, I could very easily see Dench just running away with it. Uh, we have seen a lot of scores be very close already. Um, but I do think it's early enough that I would just give Canada the slight edge, although we are getting into uh, semi-finals now so pools are starting to get quite hard um but i'm gonna give canada this slight edge just mostly on the dts and the hiddens i'd say oh this is such a tough one i feel um it, it's interesting to me talking about this match because of how different these two teams matches were last week right mm -hmm. you had canada with the 6-0 over like this really kind of declining france team that like how much does that say about them? Um, and then on the other side, you have Ukraine, who got 
beaten as badly by South Korea as you would expect them to because South Korea is just really good. How much does that say about them? Like, still mm -hmm. some pretty good scores, still some scores that are very competitive with one another, um, which I think makes for a somewhat tricky prospect of a matchup between these two. I mean, you look at 600K difference between the teams on a pick the Canada one and then a 500K victory for Ukraine. Um, I am... I'm going to pick a little bit based on Hopium here because I have no real dog in this fight, but I would like to think that Ukraine can make this happen. Um, I think between Roman, Rafty PO, and then, you know, the combination of kind of the rest of the players, whether it's Charitori or Dench or whoever, I think they have a roster that can put together a squad for pretty much anything and be competitive with this Canada roster. I think this is almost at the point of being like too close to call kind of territory because both these teams, I think, are at a very similar place. I um, agree. Like, I mean, ninth and tenth best scores on stuff notwithstanding. You know, it's like fourth and fifth best score, fourth and eighth best score, second and then thirteenth. The only one that was really a, a kind of poor performance was that Ukraine Nomad one, but a lot of the other stuff there, you know, kind of in a similar spot in the results. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of just stuck picking on vibes here. And I guess, you know, it's like, there's obviously, we have a little bias for Canada in here. Uh, so I'll, I, you know, I will both try to be a little bit of non, you know, non-biased toward anyone, but, you know, picking against the grain, I'm going to say Ukraine, but like six, four, um, I think, you know, I think, I think Roman shows up again. And I think that's a big one, um, that can help lead Ukraine to a, to a dub. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to have to agree. Uh, I think this is going to be a super close match. As it has been mentioned, it'll probably be something like 6-4, 6-5 to whoever wins. Uh, but I think Ukraine takes this just because I do think that the higher-end skill cap of the three-man roster for Ukraine is slightly better. And I, I took a quick look at this pool, and some of the maps are, like, a lot harder like it, they almost feel like two pulls harder in some slots than last week's um some of the mechanics maps are maybe like a normal increase but yeah some of these maps are really hard and i do think that is going to favor some of the teams that have those really strong players and i do think dench uh dench is probably i want to say overall likely to be the best player here but i also think roman raf g um will be able to back them up i think on the side of canada i could be completely wrong and you know this is going to be close either way but i don't think they'll be able to match some of these mechanics maps i do think some of the gimmick here maps are going to go really well for them stuff like the nomad 5 hidden 2 i think they'll have some really good picks um it'll be close either way but i i just i just feel it feel it in my heart to give it to ukraine here Ooh, i'm the tiebreaker Ooh. <laughs> what, a, what an interesting predicament to be in Ooh. the thing is like i as as talented as I believe the Canadian players are, and I love, you know, a lot of these people, the, the fact that, you know, only Sari has former World Cup experience and that, in my personal opinion, 3WC is, is you know, kind of like the step below WC. So, you know, if you're an OWC player and you've experienced that court sort of environment, like, surely that sort of translates into uh, another World Cup, like 3WC. And even then, Raf GPO and Dent are just such talented players. Not to say that there aren't any on Canada. I just think they're a little bit more flexible than a lot of the people on the Canadian roster. So, I think that I'm going to give it to Ukraine solely because i think that their players are more flexible than those of the canadian roster i i, I think that's the that's the main reason i will say i think this match goes to tiebreaker personally i i just don't think i see a world where it either six four a tiebreaker and i think that ukraine will win it based on that but that match will be saturday 1930 and with that, we are going to be switching over to the next Losers Bracket match, which was uh, Germany versus Chile. And I'll start this one off, and we will go left to right. We talked about how Kriller... We talked last week of how much Kriller has a huge carry potential as an individual. And I think semifinals, I think this is where it comes through. I think that this is, you know, this is where, you know, despite Chile having, you know, decent core, I... I think that Germany just proves to have a stronger one. And, you know, this is where, you know, despite Kriller not having the ability to carry his team last week, this is where he has his moment to shine. And this is where he proves like, yeah, I can do this. I can help lead my team to to victory. So I will vote Germany. And I think I'll give them... 
I'll give him 6-3. I'll give him 6-3, maybe 6-4 with Germany. Okay. I think I think 6-3-ish is pretty accurate here. I think this feels like a really similar matchup for Germany as Brazil was last weekend, but I think Chile is a worse team than Brazil, and so Germany is going to be able to win the match. Um, and that's not shade to Chile. Brazil is just a top four team in this tournament. They're in winners semifinals right now. Um, Chile is better on the way are. They are better at reading than Brazil was, but that's also a strength for Germany. And because of that, Germany is better on hard rock than Chile is. Um, reminder, Germany was losing hard rock picks to Brazil last weekend. Um, they were still number three out of 10 on the Hard Rock 2. Chile was number nine out of 10 on that map. Chile didn't play the Hard Rock 1, but you don't have to show me too much else to make the point that Chile's skill cap on Hard Rock is just not there. So I think the opening up of an abusable skill set for Germany, uh, the ability to contest Chile on one of their very good skill sets in the low AR hidden reading, right? Germany. Uh, having a pretty close score to Chile on the Nomad 1 last weekend, which was low AR. Um, and Ch Chile really only having an on-paper advantage on speed means that this is a pretty good matchup for Germany. Um, and beyond that, I think they just have better players and other people can talk about that. But yeah, I vote Germany like also 6-2. I go s or 7. Yeah, 7-2. Seven, it's best of 7-2, seven, seven, yeah. yeah. The, uh, as we've been predicting all along you know of course seven yes. seven six you know seven six you know seven, seven two six, obviously. Seven, yeah yeah yes yeah. of course i would never spread misinformation i am well yeah. informed of the best ofs as a referee for the three digit world cup of course we are professionals and we yes, are yes absolutely okay we will take no further questions i'm gonna take germany as well um i'm gonna say seven two uh, i'm gonna say seven two two i think Germany's had some of the best scores on the DTs, on the free mod. They should have the advantage on the hard rocks as well, like you mentioned, Dio. I do think Chile can probably take some points on things like hidden or no mod picks, but uh, we're going to see some of those banned out by Germany. And I think it's going to be tough to see Chile get a ton of points, especially with the pool uh, getting a lot harder on certain picks. Uh, as we already said, uh, Curlier is going to have even more of a chance to shine. Uh, Chile, I think, doesn't scale nearly as well. So I think it's going to be mostly one-sided, but Chile will get a couple points. Um, so I don't know if I would say necessarily one-sided either. I think this is definitely... Uh... I, 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 I need to back up here. I, I was like uncertain what to make of this Germany team after last week, because I guess I thought they were a better team in that matchup than they were. Um, I, I, I kind of feel bad for underestimating what felt like the ghost of Brazil, considering some of those players have been on those teams for a really long time and are, you know, not as prominent in the tourney scene and they turned around and beat Germany. So, like, I don't know if that was me giving Brazil not enough credit, giving Germany too much credit or somewhere in the between, probably somewhere in between, um, which makes it hard for me to predict this because my expectations are just, like, super weird now. Um, I think as we start to scale, it's kind of the story of Chile in, a, in any World Cup environment. As the pools get harder, they just sort of are a team that typically falls off, like, whether it's their OWC team or their 3WC, 4WC, whatever. Um, and I, and I'm going to, again, like maybe have too much confidence in Germany. Um, but I think, you know, there were, there was like, again, one match, one or one or two maps at most that like weren't super close that they had in common. Um, and then, you know, Germany wins like the hard rock, Germany wins the DT one, Germany has a pretty good score on the DT two. Like, it feels like the skill cap stuff already was favoring Germany and the pool has only gotten harder. And uh, I'm just going to, again, put my faith in Kriller and be like, yo, Kriller, go go do things because that's what he does. And as the pools start to get harder, and I think Chile probably doesn't scale quite as well as somebody like Kriller does for most of their members, um, I'm just going to run back the Germany pick like last week and say best of 13 now, 7-5. Uh, These all feel so close, but yeah, I'm going to say Germany, 7-5. Uh, Germany 
Oh, it, it hurts because I do think Chile is is a country that just has the dog in them. Like they they really played well last week considering their qualities. Um, like I don't know what happened with the qualities that they just underperform or overperform last week. But as much as I want Chile to keep going in this bracket, I think Germany is just too hard of an opponent. Uh, but yeah, as as has been mentioned, how hard the pool is. Kriller, I think, unironically, could be the difference on a couple of these picks if they get unbanned. Uh, so like Nomad Five, Hidden Two, I think Kriller alone could could match Chile like like pretty well. Um, I think Chile will still get some points. I could imagine this being like seven three, seven four. Just considering, I think Chile is 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 a team that just performs um, under pressure. But I think Germany is too good. And with how hard the pool is, if this was an easier pool, if this was like a matchup that happened week one, week two, I could actually see this going in Chile. But I think at this stage, it's it's not doable. So I think it's just going to be Germany taking this. Yeah, absolutely. I think the point about it, if it were an earlier stage matchup, could definitely go the way of Chile. Um, cause Chile's team is all like, or at least for a long time were lower ranked players, right? Um, you have people like Suntan and Gonza who are the main carries for this team who are either mid or low three digit. Um, but the carries for Germany are really solid mechanics players for just higher star rating stuff in general. And of course, Kriller is like one of the best open ranked tournament players in the game. So I think just the later the round, the better it is for Germany, and we're in semifinals. Pool had a big jump last week. I think it's just Germany, and I say that as somebody who voted for Chile last week. So yeah, <laughs> think, Germany I across it, the board. Yeah, I want I want Chile to prove us wrong, though. I would love for them to somehow win this matchup and then just revel at this five zero uh, decision. Yeah, I mean, it would actually be quite a surprising because, uh, and that match will be Saturday, 18 UTC, and how uh, potentials work for those who don't know or didn't watch the OWC episodes, essentially the group consensus from the previous two matches, the uh, initial losers bracket matches will set us up for the potential, so right now we will predict that Ukraine wins against Canada, and here that Germany wins against Chile, thus the potential would be Germany against Chile, and that potential would be Sunday, 19 UTC, and I think I will start this one off that if Germany goes against Ukraine, I think I will still give it to Germany. However, I believe it goes to like a 7-5, seven, 7-6. Seven, um, solely because we we talked about how, how much the pool has gotten harder, how much Kriller is really able to shine. Uh, Dio talked about how great of a tournament player he is, and I agree. I, I absolutely agree. He is extremely talented, both in 1v1 and in team such, uh, situations. So I think that with that, it's all about whether or not Germany um, Germany can have, you know, that third player that can support Kriller. Because I, on most picks, I believe that they have a, an, a decent amount of core, especially with Shark, with Androids, and Flay. It is really hard to vote against them because as much as I, you know, I look at Dench, I look at Rap GPO and Poma, these players are also significantly talented. I just think that in the long run, the German individuals outperform Ukraine. So I'm going to go to Germany, not super wholeheartedly, because I still think that there might be an off chance that it, you know, maybe the tiebreaker sways back to Ukraine, but I think that it will be close regardless. So I will vote for Germany, and I think it will be close. I think, okay, look, in every, in every bracket, in every stage, there's going to be an unlikely win, right? And it's like, even even if it's technically incorrect to make the call on a on a pure statistical evaluation, there's gonna be there's gonna be a team that overperforms or a team that underperforms in their matchup, and you get a and you get an upset. I just I just have a feeling this is gonna be it. I feel like Ukraine just has moments where they play better than people expect them to, and I think Germany after the Brazil like. I don't know. I I think Germany, despite being a really good team, I, for some reason I just feel it feel it in my bones that for for whatever reason, if this matchup happens, Ukraine would you know win this on like tiebreaker or something. So as a, as a left field out of left field pick, I'm just gonna put Ukraine wins this seven six, and there's not much backing that other than just the magic. You can keep your statistics, but I prefer I prefer the Ukraine I magic. I knew it. I knew I knew that was gonna be the next words out of your mouth. 
on. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and disagree with these two. I'm, I mean, I'm going to take Germany as K did, but I don't think it's actually going to be that close. I would say 7-2, maybe 7-3. To me, I actually oh, feel like... Oh, that's an interesting, yeah, interesting yeah, scoreline, I, like I flame. Ukraine is actually not that good of a matchup into Germany. They have relied so much on Dench this tournament, who's going to be almost certainly outmatched and outperformed by Kriller. So all of a sudden you don't have the highest skill cap player in the in the lobby anymore. Um yes, they have Roman and Raf GPO, uh, but the German support has consistently been able to match. I think Germany has consistently had some very strong scores, whereas you look at Ukraine, they had some decent scores they didn't have any amazing scores and they had a lot of really bad scores last week and the week before um germany lost against brazil who's one of the best teams in the tournament in a close 6-4 match i don't think that's anything to to worry about on its own uh, a lot of these scores were still good for for germany um and so i'm gonna have to give it to them 7-2 damn okay this guy. Um, I think it's going to be closer than that. Um, I'm going to agree with the outcome there. I am going to say that it's going to be Germany. Um, I think you know you like we kind of talked about right. You looked at their you look at their scores from last week. Uh, you know Ukraine wins a map where they got tenth and eleventh respectively, and then Germany wins stuff where like they got third and Ukraine got tenth, or they got second and and Ukraine got sixth. Um, or let's see, what's the other one they got? six and ukraine got 13th like clearly i think germany just has this higher average performance level um and i think their ceiling is also going to be higher um it's kind of the same story right where the teams that are just built a little bit better in terms of scaling start to have the advantage once you get to these late round pools and semis is going to take a step up in that regard as we've discussed you know pretty much every matchup so far um so i think germany definitely has pretty clear advantage here i think ukraine is too good and has like too solid of players at the top end um to be you know completely blown out i don't i don't see this being like a seven two necessarily um i think ukraine probably gets three or four points they can leverage their strengths and their carry players to at least get that far um but i think germany probably gets a break point or two um and i think it's like a seven five type of scenario maybe seven four um but yeah definitely definitely gonna look germany favored for me Yeah, um, I feel like it's, I, I, I kind of agree with Iflam. I feel like this is not going to be super close. The caliber players on Germany are just, like, one leg up on the caliber players in Ukraine. To illustrate the point, um, uh, Kriller was number two overall. The best performer for Ukraine last week was Dench at number 20. The second best performer for Germany was Shark at number 21, right next to Dench. Uh, you yeah. have Shari Tori and Roman at 34 and 43, but Para is at 42. You have Fla at 48, but Raf GPO is at 47. Like there is matching pairs going on for basically all of the members of Ukraine and Germany down the line, with the exception that Kriller is number two and there's nobody who can match him on the side of Ukraine. And I feel like having that extra carry is what puts this team a leg up on Ukraine for the side of Germany. And I feel like there's not going to be a ton that Ukraine can actually do to match that. If you look at the head-to-head -head scores from last week, Ukraine wins two maps. One of them is a difference of 45K, and the other is a difference of 160K. Germany wins every other map with a difference of, let's see, 400K and uh 900k and another 200k difference um i feel like the as aaron said the overall caliber of play for germany is just better um i think the magic can happen if ukraine pulls out really solid plays on lots and lots of the mechanics picks i think stuff like uh, the Hard Rock 1 Hard Rock 3 are really good for Ukraine this weekend. Uh, I think stuff like Bump is really good for uh, Ukraine this weekend in the free mod pool. And I feel like they're going to have a tough time on the DTs. And I feel like they're going to have a tough time 
on stuff like uh, a lot of the Nomad pool outside the Nomad 2. I think that's also a good pick for them. But I think they have to be extremely on point with their mechanics um, and be able to perform at a really, really high level to be able to win a match like this against Germany. Um, especially, yeah, I, I think this is a, a tough match for Ukraine. I think it's probably pretty Germany favored, um, but Ukraine has chances to win if they can uh, narrow this match down to a battle between a mechanics team and a gimmick team. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be able to do that. I think Germany has enough good mechanics players to disallow that kind of a binary match, and Germany will win because of that. Yeah, I think that... Um... The board, you know, Vordy, Vordy has the hopium of all time. So look, Ukraine, look, if you're watching, magic. yeah, if you, Ukraine, if you're watching and you win, you have this spicy screenshot to post all over Twitter. And of course, if that potential happens, that will be Sunday 19 UTC. And we're going to be moving on to our second set of losers bracket matches. So the first one up will be Sweden versus Indonesia. And I... I'm pretty I'm pretty torn because as we saw last week against the Polish roster who had number one had a more people and seated higher than the Indonesian roster, um, they ended up winning against Poland. I don't know if that's the case in terms of Sweden. Now Dito and Skydiver are pretty good players. I, I think that um I think that they are really, really talented. However, I think this is this is I think this is where the four team roster ends because on the flip side you have players like Skilla, you have players like Zinx and and Trumpetino who I personally think will be able to take on Indonesia on most maps. It's not it's not as um I just think that this is where the magic is. I think this is where the real power numbers are at play. And we have seen Skilla perform again and again. And I don't think I'll ever stop talking about him. Um, as well as, like, you know, his support, his supporting uh, teammates like Lightwine, Trumpetino. Um, I, I really think that this goes over to Sweden. I will say 7-4. to four. I'll go 7-4. to four. I... I, I, I don't want to vote for Indonesia this week because they have a four-player roster and it's semifinals and the pool is hard. Um, but? But they looked but. pretty solid last week. Like, their match against Poland was not super close. They set a lot of really good scores. They have head-to-head -head wins on three of the five maps that were played by both teams. That said, I think overall the scores from Sweden were probably better. I think overall they're still going to have, well, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is going to be close. The average scores for both of these rosters were pretty similar. The overall performance for both rosters were pretty similar. Indonesia, of course, had more people near the top because they had to play more maps. They only have four people. Um, but the average scores for the supporting members of Sweden's roster were still pretty good. Um, I feel like this is going to be close somehow, despite Indonesia only having a four-player roster. Um, I think a big thing to remember for Sweden is that they were getting points against the United States on some of the easier maps in the pool. Stuff like uh, Night Fog and uh, Vortex, I think, were their two points in that match. Whereas Indonesia is setting better scores on... Uh, stuff like the Free Mod 3 that's a little bit more difficult, stuff like the Hard Rock 2 that's a little bit more skill cap focused, stuff like the Hard Rock 1 that saw really, really difficult uh, team performances on that map. Like, Indonesia uh, scored better on the Hard Rock 1 than Germany did this weekend, right? Like, that is a good team score. Um, it's Is it as good as Brazil's? No. But is it good anyway? Yes. I, I feel like Indonesia has the chance to make this happen. So I'm going to go with the magic prediction and say uh, seven to six for Indonesia. I think if I voted with my head, I would probably just vote Sweden. Um, but you know what? Indonesia tech tiebreaker, they win. <laughs> yeah, I do think this is another close matchup. I think a lot of the Indo players on this four-man roster are like pretty good all-rounders, which I think really helps make up the deficit of two players. The fact that a lot of them can play most maps, and but I think the main thing that's 
leaning me towards Sweden is I think Skilla underperformed last week. Uh, you know, we we know what uh, what they can do in, like, open rank tourneys, what they did in qualities, and they got fourth overall. Um, I think last week, like, despite Skilla still, still playing pretty well, uh, can do a lot better this week. Um, and I think the backing players on Sweden are good enough that assuming Skilla can put on some carry performances in some of these harder maps, I think it'll win out on Endo. However... If Skilla doesn't have that great of a match, I think that could, you know, definitely lead to Indo winning. But I'm leaning towards Sweden, and I do think it's going to be close. Something like 7-5, 7-6 maybe as well. But uh, yeah, a small advantage to Sweden, assuming Skilla ends up being the best player in this match. I'm going to go with Dio here, and I've been thinking about this this entire time through the first several people talking, and it's made this a really hard decision to make for me. I think, based on the scores last week, like take the team size thing out of the, out of the equation, because obviously that just doesn't matter. You can just have four people, and it's fine, I guess, if you're, if you're good. Um, Indonesia seemed to have the higher skill floor, uh, Sweden got 14th on Nomad 1, 16th on Nomad 2. Um, some really not super great scores there. I think Indonesia's worst score of the week was like 9th overall. So, uh, you know, look, and again, you know, we, yeah, we're starting to get to the stage where I think skill cap is probably more important than skill floor. Um, but man, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of cool what Indonesia has shown themselves capable of doing. I think Sweden, you know, they played, you know, it's, it's another situation where like they played against a really good team on the other side. So they were going to be in a tough matchup regardless. But, uh, you know, looking at these scores that they had in common, I, I kind of like what I'm, oh, goodness, I'm moving my tab here. Uh, I kind of like what I'm seeing from Indonesia, as, as weird as that is to say about a team that only has four players on it that's now in the semifinals week. I kind of like what I'm seeing here on the scores in common. And some of these scores from Sweden are kind of not the greatest um i don't know man i'm just gonna have some faith in the in the indonesia train here um it's gonna be another close one. i think all the matches this week pretty much are gonna be pretty close um i think this one it's like indonesia and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say they went on tiebreaker and it goes seven six indonesia definitely had the better head-to-head -head last week uh compared to sweden they had a lot of impressive scores but i think now is not the time to throw out the the team size to me that just gets more and more important as the tournament goes on. As the map pools get harder, it becomes so much harder to just throw in a third player that can fill for any given map. Um, and they only have four players to work with, right? Sweden has more dedicated skill sets, and the map pool feel is quite a bit harder this week, I think. Uh, like Vordy said, I also feel like Skilla had a bit of an underperformance last week, should be the highest skill cap player in this match, and I expect uh, Skilla to do a decent bit better this week. And so I do think Sweden will recover after having a bit of an off week. Um, they were up against the United States, and I do think uh, going into a match that feels almost like an auto loss can be a bit demoralizing uh, and really affect performance even before the match starts. Uh, so I'm actually going to take Sweden 7 to 4. Maybe maybe 7 to 5, but I, I think I'm going to go 7 to 4, a little bit less close than Kane Vordy uh, predicted, but we'll have to see. Oh, okay, so I guess a consensus on the board. Sorry, D O and T O N G, but I guess you know I flame broke the tie. We're gonna go. Sweden wins this match, and that match will take place Saturday, fifteen thirty UTC, and we will see uh, the result of that tomorrow. And we're gonna be switching over to the last of the first uh, losers bracket matches for this weekend. At Cavo, please. Oh no. Oh, okay, there we go. And we're going to be switching over to Hong Kong versus Finland. That's going to be Saturday 12.30 UTC. Um, Based on last week, I know Suwagi top scored a lot of the Hong Kong, um, the match, the maps that Hong Kong had played um, with, you know, yeah, and he averaged like what, 600k, 650k? It, it, he's such a talented player, and even then, I just think that he has, like, like we talked about with Kriller against uh, in Germany. I feel like he, this is like, this is, you know, this is like his Kriller moment where he can 
really prove that he is a force to be reckoned with and he is a great worldwide tournament player and he's going to prove it right now. As much as I think that Finland has great players as well, I think that the overall synergy and core roster of Hong Kong just provides a lot, again, like I said in a previous match, a lot more flexibility. So I will vote Hong Kong. But I think I'll vote I'll vote seven three Hong Kong. I'll vote I think I think that's a I think that's a good one. So I will vote Hong Kong seven three. I think that's a good outcome for this match. I'm gonna have to take Hong Kong as well. I'm honestly as much as I want to see a close match, I'm gonna take Hong Kong seven one. I think Swaggy is the highest skill cap player here. Um Habiki looked has looked great multiple weeks in a row as well. Um, and they did just lose to the Philippines, but Philippines has been one of the best performing teams despite their seed. Uh, on the side of Finland, it was, I believe, Amacetic and uh, Sepe who looked really good uh, last week. But even then, they were both lower than Habiki in individual performance. Um, I think the second, the third best target player for Finland was uh, somewhere down close to number 50 for Ali. Uh, so unless we see, I think, all the players from Finland absolutely pop off. It's not going to be super close. So 7-1 Hong Kong. Um, yeah, kind of kind of there with the others on this one. Um, I think Hong Kong just has too high of a skill cap on their roster. Um, it, this really does feel almost exactly like Germany versus Chile, where... Yeah. It's a team that just has like the highest skill cap player between the two teams against a team that historically, you know, they might get to top 12, top eight, but they traditionally tend to kind of fall off at that stage due to lack of a skill cap performer. Um, it's just the same situation here. Suwagi's so really, really good. Hong Kong has typically a couple of players who can back him up, whether it's Hibiki, Xion, F2X, whatever. Um, and I think that unfortunately for finland i don't really see a way for them to get into this match i think the skill cap of hong kong is just too high i think suagi is too good and i think the backing scores for hong kong have shown themselves to be you know good enough um even if it is almost always suagi followed by whoever um it's that's that's fine you're okay with that and it's been good enough for you know to get them this far and i think it's good enough in this matchup as well so it's yeah seven one seven two um this is probably the most one-sided matchup i'm gonna pick i think of this week Yeah, I, I think I have to agree here as well. I don't, as much as I want to believe in the Magic, I think this is a combination of Hong Kong having the best player and also just the better overall team. I think Finland can maybe get, I'll say, like one or two points. I don't think this is going to be too close. I think this is one of the more clear-cut matchups we've seen so far. I think this is like Hong Kong 72. I, I, I can't imagine a world where Finland is able to go deep on this pool and and get a get a lot of points so yeah this this is just hong kong yeah hong kong double band speed and then wins like 7-1 or 7-2 or 7-0 i don't know like that uh, yeah i'm done that's that's the match <laughs> moving uh, on okay yeah, i guess we're just nice like nice hong kong this is this is actually really funny that this has been the easiest uh, prediction of the entire one circle, you know, the last one. So that is going to be uh, Saturday 12.30. I believe that's the first match of the day of Saturday other than the match that is later. Oh, I'm sorry. The United States goes uh, against first later today, but we will go to that in a minute. Instead, we are going to be going to the potential. So our consensus voted that it would be Hong Kong versus Sweden. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to I think I'm just going to vote Hong Kong here. I'm sorry. I I just, I think a lot of the points that we made last match of, you know, how strong the Hong Kong roster is and how much of a, you know, kind of a, a fight there was between Sweden and Indonesia, regardless of who would win between those two teams, I think Hong Kong would come out on top regardless of who won that initial match. And I think that, um, I think that this match is no exception. Overall, you no, know, we talked about F two X Hibiki and Suwaki. I just think that that core roster is more powerful than whatever Sweden could possibly pull up, and it's a bit of a shame that I think that Sweden's run ends there. But I just think you know, 
Hong Kong has former 3WC winners, plenty of, you know, experience in other team tournaments as well as the Digit World Cups. And I think that that carries through really strongly here. And yep, Hong Kong, I'll go I'll go seven two Hong Kong. Yeah, I'm gonna take what I said about the last match. Uh control C, control V, and uh have pretty much the same prediction for more or less the same reasons. Obviously they're slightly different, but I don't think there's too much more to say about it as that uh, isn't similar to what we've already covered in the last match. And I'm gonna say Hong Kong seven two. I'll give Sweden one one extra point. Uh, I'm going to give them fewer extra points, actually. Oh. I think this is more one-sided than Hong Kong Finland. Not because Finland is a better team or Sweden is a worse team. I think this is just an even better matchup for Hong Kong. Um, last week, the only two maps where Sweden has better head-to-heads than Hong Kong are on Vortex, which was one of the easiest maps in the pool uh, and very easy to just miss once in the middle. Uh, and also Hong Kong is not a stream team, so they can ban out Nomad 2 this week and be fine comparably. Um, and Free Mod 1, where you see a 99.89% A rank 650k for Suwagi uh, being the sole reason that Hong Kong doesn't have a better score. I feel like that's probably not a reason to be scared of that head-to-head -head matchup on aim consistency if you are Hong Kong, where you have F2X, Hibiki, Suwagi, who all have really good scores. F2X is the only one who full comboed. That was with Hidden Hard Rock. And Hibiki and Suwagi both, like, one missed in the middle of the map and got over 99.6 accuracy on the map. Like, I... Don't think this is reason to be scared for Hong Kong. Every other head-to-head -head map throughout the entire week, Hong Kong has a better score on. So even their historical weakness of speed is not abusable by Sweden. I think this is a very, very one-sided matchup if it comes to it. Um, and it's going to be like Hong Kong 7-0 or 7-1. Yeah, and I do, do think, as Kay mentioned, regardless of who wins Sweden-Indo, because I think that is a pretty close matchup and either could win, um, regardless who faces Hong Kong, I think this will just be a pretty solid Hong Kong victory by by quite a good margin, similar to the Finland matchup. Um, yeah, I think, I think I think Hong Kong is third seed for a reason. Being in the losers bracket this early is sort of a landmine for each team um, that faces yeah. them. So yeah, this is Hong Kong once again by quite a good margin. I still think Sweden can manage to get a point or maybe two, but I can't really imagine them getting more than that. Just because I think anything that we'll, we're able to put a, a good three-man on, Hong Kong will just be able to do a little bit better on average. But they'll still probably get a point just by just by playing a map pretty well and having a bit of luck. Yeah, so I guess, you know, based on our predictions, Hong Kong just gets back-to-back -back wins over Nordic countries. Yep. Uh, goodbye the to that. Country, right? <laughs> goodbye to that part of the world. Um, I think the languages are like mutually intelligible between some mm -hmm. of them. But anyway, uh, yeah, it, Hong Kong, everybody's already said pretty much anything there is to say about this one. Hong Kong is just better. Sorry. Goodbye. 7172. All right, so we have pretty whole handedly voted Hong Kong twice in a row. And that is the last of our losers bracket matches and potentials. If that match ends up happening, that will be Sunday 13 UTC. And I believe the Indonesia, if Indonesia wins, and we are wrong about that initial prediction, they will also play at the same time Sunday 13 UTC. How convenient that they all decide to play the potential at the same time. How incredible. But enough about the losers bracket. Uh, let's move on to the winner's bracket. So the first of that is going to be Saturday 14 UTC, South Korea versus Brazil. I think that, look, I, I, I'm i going to be real honest. I had South Korea winning this entire thing. I don't think this match is going to be any exception. Sorry, Brazil. I love you guys. However, South Korea. So I'm just going to go South Korea. I, I do think that Brazil... Um, puts up a really strong fight because of the you know the core roster that we said Zubs has been playing pretty well Korea Malago has always been a respectable tournament player and same thing with and Defont has you know kind of been showing up and he's been showing his stuff so I think that Brazil will be able to uh you know take a decent amount of points off of Brazil so I think I'll go like 7-3 I think I'll go 7-3 South Korea for me okay the the wild thing about this matchup for me is that when I looking at the comparisons I think Brazil, out of, I think, five maps both teams played, Brazil won the matchup on three of them. 
which is crazy. But obviously, uh, those were like tapping heavy basic mechanics maps. Um, and I do think, particularly on this pool, uh, that has a lot of gimmickier stuff that has a, a lot higher skill cap as well. I think South Korea will obviously win as being first seed by a lot and being probably the favorite to win this whole thing. But I still think Brazil will be able to get... Like, I think this will be the uh, closest South Korea matchup thus far, which means still probably not super close. Uh, but I think Brazil could even get like three, maybe even three points on like tapping, on mechanics uh, that they that they play pretty well. South Korea wins... Whole, you know, whole-handedly as the matchup goes deeper, but I think Brazil can get like three points, maybe so seven three to South Korea. Uh, but I think this Brazil lineup is good enough to at least at least put up a good fight for sure. Yeah, I think this is the first time I think South Korea can truly be tested because I think this Brazil roster is really quite good. Um, and like you're saying, you know, there's it's a three to two or whatever scorers in comparison, and yeah, those are all like just mechanics tapping stuff but hey it's a weakness and any weakness is something for you know the opposing team to try to uh win some points on you know between things like your nomad twos your dt pool here um i i agree with with vorte in this case i think the way is is there for brazil to get three ish points I think South Korea probably just, you know, can ban out a couple of the tapping maps. I, I'm assuming there's two bans now that it's best of 13, because it'd be weird if it yes. wasn't. Um, so the upside there for South Korea is that they can just, like, ban, uh, you know, Nomad 2, DT3, whatever they want to do. Um, but I still think there's going to be a couple of picks there where Brazil will definitely have their opportunities. That being said, South Korea is still the better team and uh, still obviously going to be favored on pretty much any other skill set than raw tapping mechanics um and so i think you know this is a situation where in a perfect world right here's how brazil can still win something 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 um they they south korea bans imperfectly brazil wins all of the tapping maps and gets a break point on something and somehow wins like seven five or on a tiebreaker um but i don't think you went on a tech tv against south korea so that's actually probably unlikely anyway um yeah i i think the, the best case scenario would be for brazil to win seven five that's the only way they can win this and i think it's really really hard to beat the south korea team seven to five um as such south korea just wins it and i think it's not quite that close i think it's like seven three seven four is probably the best outcome for brazil that i can see happening brazil look fantastic last week right they had four players in the top 20 individual performers which is the first time we've seen that this tournament and even still they beat germany six to four by uh, two points i don't think south korea is going to be uh, any easier in fact south korea is going to be quite a bit harder for them on top of that even though uh, the individual performance was not necessarily up there for worst hr player last week specifically i think was number four uh, is still probably the highest skill cap and best player in this tournament right now i think the pool being quite a bit harder is going to be rough for brazil as well well uh, and so brazil can definitely take uh, some points but i do think they're going to start to get out scaled into these later rounds especially by teams like uh, south korea and the u.s who have such such high high skill caps that i think are far and away the top two teams here so i'm going to say seven two two four sk Yeah, I would do the here's how Brazil can still win, <laughs> but I think it's mostly been covered. I think the sleeper pool for Brazil is the hard rock pool. They've been picking into low approach rate into other teams like Germany. I don't think that's what you do into South Korea. Uh, you are not going to be picking hidden three. You are not going to be picking the Nomad five and the free mod three. Um, but I think if Brazil picks into the Nomad two, the hard rock pool, the DT pool, they have chances to take points on all of those maps, but they are chances, right? It's not a, this is a map that Brazil 100% wins or, you know, 75% wins. It's more like a, here's a 55 to 65% chance win on these maps for Brazil. Uh, and if you roll well every time, you can theoretically force a tiebreaker. There are uh, eight of those maps. So if... South Korea bans two, Brazil picks six of them, wins all six. Theoretically, we can go to tiebreaker. The chances of that actually happening, I think, are much lower. South Korea has uh, still really good players who can play speed. Um, they did not really need to last week. 
because they ended the match very quickly. Um, but I think this is still going to be a doable matchup for South Korea, uh, even into the fourth seed of Brazil. And I think a big part of that is the uh, extra flexibility of the roster for South Korea. Uh, I think players like uh, Algris Mo Jong Young, uh, Fragrance of Page are going to be a little bit better for South Korea as compared to uh, namely Mistia and Nyash. Uh, whereas Nissan, Defon, Zubs, and Corey Maluko were all top 20, uh, Niash and Mistia were bottom 12 last weekend. Um, so the roster really is those four players for Brazil most of the time. Um, and I think that that kind of limits what they can be good at. You saw it in the match versus Germany, where all of their wins were on either speed mechanics or hard rock, basically, and all of their losses were on other stuff. So I think this goes to South Korea because there's more of other stuff in the pool, and therefore they have more maps where they can pick into the stuff they are best at rather than Brazil uh, kind of being pigeonholed into picking particular things into South Korea. Yeah, I think unlike the losers bracket matches, I feel like maybe up until next week we will be voting pretty uniformly these next uh, two matches. And across the board we have South Korea, and that matches, of course, at Saturday 14 UTC. We are going to be moving on to the next winner's bracket match and the last match that we are going to be covering on this episode today. That is the United States versus the Philippines. Now, I'm going to start with... I'm going to... Okay. I might... I might I might have a black pill here. I might have a black pill here because of the fact that the Philippines... Look, I'm, I'm a fan of Nathan Ram and I'm a fan of Hyuk. And if I see say, a similar behavior from the United States that I saw last week, I might think that Philippines will win. This is my black pill. Like, I'm, I may be going crazy here, you know, to go against the United States, right? One of the strongest rosters that we've had to play, you know, the season second. But goddamn, if I, I'll be damned if I ignore the performance from Hyuk and Nathan Ram, especially on, you know, certain maps. Okay, maybe I'm going skit, so maybe I will just end up voting the United yeah. States because of the fact that maybe, maybe, maybe the scaling, scaling power from people like the Caden, from Taquito, and um, you know, new faces on the roster, Razor Fruit and Tallula. I okay, you know what? Uh, okay, fuck it. I'll just go. I'll just go USA for me because I don't. Maybe maybe this is like the the week that they get their shit together and they, you know, don't come late into the lobby every time, right? I'm calling you out this week because of that, you know? We, let's not have an incident where you guys don't come in and realize that a pick has been made. Yes, United States. But I think that their skill level does shine above all else despite their other issues. So, the keto, the Kaden is... I'll admit it, it. It is hard to vote against them. Bashi, oh dude, Bashi has also been showing up pretty, pretty handedly. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna knock a lie. So, yeah, I think yeah. USA. Um, Dio, you want to go next? Sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as you said, they were late to join a map last week, so there's clearly some trouble that this team is having, uh, deciding what their roster is going to be. I don't know what map it was. I don't remember. I know I was casting that match, but I don't remember what map it was. Um, but there's a pretty good chance out of the eight maps they played that they were either number one or two on it. Uh, they were number one for the tournament on five of the eight maps they played last weekend, and they were number two on a sixth map in the free mod two. Um, so the only two bad scores they had last week were no mod three, no mod two. Um, and if I remember right, those were right near the start of the match as well. I'm just going to double check that. So I don't spread misinformation on the internet. Um, but yeah, no mod two was literally the first map of the match and no mod three was the second map of the match. Um, and those were the only two maps on which they were not either first place or second place on the map. Um, and one of the maps that United States lost last week, they were second place on Vortex. So they literally only lost because Sweden set the number one team score in the tournament. Um, so I think if you make it so this team, you know, basically, even if they get a slower start to the matchup, 
when they get rolling, there's not much that Philippines is going to be able to do to stop them. I think that's evident both in the quarterfinals where they started off number seven and number 13 and then proceeded to get number two on the third map in the match and then proceed to number one every single map after the first three maps were played. Um, and in the qualifiers where a lot of their second runs uh, were very, very strong for the United States. And those were uh, the majority of the USA's runs that were actually counted in qualifiers. Um, except for on DT2. Oh my God, what happened on DT2? Okay, I'm not looking <laughs> at that anymore. That's nasty. Um, but I, I, I feel like this is a team that can turn it on when it is needed. Um, and we really saw a lot of that last weekend as, again, after the third map was played, they were number one on every single map in the match. Yeah, I mean, you kind of took the words right out of my mouth. You covered pretty much everything I wanted to say about the matchup. I'm going to take the U.S. as well. I don't expect it to be super close, and uh, that that is really all to say about it. Wow, what a shocker. I know. I think there is a world where this match can be, like, relatively close. Um, you know, the the world where... Hyok and Nathan Ram just absolutely pop off on every single map and like a third member for the Philippines performs well and the United States maybe has a couple down performances. Um, I think there's definitely a world where this could be a relatively close one. Um, but I think USA, you know, it, it's historically always been the case in, in most every World Cup that they just tend to get better as the tournament gets later and later. Um, I feel like their organization typically ends up getting a little bit better. So to, you know, to talk about the point of, you know, having trouble with rosters last round, I don't know that that's going to be quite the same issue in the semifinals as it was in the past. Um, when, you know, things are getting a little more serious, you got to really buckle down and make sure you're super, super prepped. Um, and I think USA just has a better all around roster instead of being super, super top heavy the way the Philippines are. This is kind of what we've been talking about for the Philippines over the course of this tournament is, you know, how far can their two man core take them? Um, and I think the answer is losing in winners semifinals to the United States um, because I think USA wins this and it's somewhere all around the lines of 7-3 or so. It's funny, I'm almost getting like OWC flashbacks just for this tournament. Like South Korea gets first seed, we're like, oh yeah, surely they win. And then it gradually this this sense of fear from this US roster starts building up I'm like, oh... I wonder if they don't just win this matchup because I think they will win this matchup, but I'm s slowly starting to wonder if USA might actually be able to SK because originally I, I I thought SK was gonna was gonna take it just because of their overwhelmingly stellar quality performance, but it's just like th this roster that the United States have th they underperformed on those two maps the Noma two Noma three but that that felt like they weren't warm or just weren't weren't ready especially Noma two. Uh, where like Takedo is getting 360k on a yeah, uh, on, on a, a speed silly. tapping map. There's like there's no way that that's even close to his normal performance. Let alone that, that was also one best. of the easiest maps in the pool too, right? Like later yeah, on in the match, yeah. he goes on and full combos DT3 with 98, and everyone else in yeah. the lobby has like yeah 400k. So, so, so there's like there's like no way that that was their best effort on that map, and probably even the Nomad three. So there's a world where USA is like number one on like even, maybe even six maps if you disclude um. Vortex. I just think this team has so much depth. Like any skill set, tapping, um, their stellar on, even weird stuff like the, you know, all uh, high approach rating, reading DTs. I think they're probably the best team in the tournament. Like getting 2.6 million on Magenta Potion is insane, but they have a roster that can do it. Um, hard Rocks are fantastic. Uh, you don't even need it. Like it's just the overall six man of this team is so good. Um, I think this is going to be, yeah, I think Hyok plus um, Nathan Ram and, and, but they're not going to have too many maps where they can really, uh, you know, compete with three. And even with those two star players on Philippines, USA has like so many, like it is full of star players. So yeah, I, I don't think USA will just win this matchup. The scores they got last weekend, especially considering it doesn't look like that's even them at their peak. Um, is making me wonder if USA has the has the potential to to take this whole tournament. Okay, so I think we pretty much <laughs> South Korea and the United States back to back. And yeah, I think that is the 
I think that is the end of the episode. If Please watch the three-digit World Cup matches. Lots of interesting matches. Feel free to roast us on Twitter. Take your screenshots. And I think that we look forward to an amazing weekend. First match will be at 4.30 UTC, which is in, I believe, seven hours? Yeah, about seven hours. And six that's hours. Six oh, hours. six hours. I apologize. I cannot do math. So six hours, we will be looking at the United States versus the Philippines. And good luck to both teams. Good luck to all the teams this weekend. Head over to 3WC, follow the Twitch, join their Discord. And this has been Full Circle. Thank you to everyone that has joined us, both viewers, our streamer, and people on the desk. Thank you, Dio, iFlame, T1G, and Vordy. This has been Full Circle. I've been Kay, and we will see you next time. See you.